love what I do. I would just assume continue. I have a great show that we, that's been renewed. I'm the only one that they renew The Apprentice. They renewed it. I mean, officially, you know that better than I do. They officially renewed it. And I said, no, I'm not doing it. And Mark Burnett actually called me and said, I can't believe you're not taking a renewal. Everybody takes a renewal. You know, very few shows are renewed. It's hard to get a renewal. He said, you have a major renewal for many, many shows and you're not taking it. I said, that's right. We have to make our country great again. I know politicians. They're not going to do it. I can do it. All right, folks, welcome to the Molesburg panel. Uh, that was Donald Trump. And before we introduce the panel, that was Donald Trump last week with uh, J.D. Hayworth, who, of course, does a great show, 8 p.m. Eastern time, right on this Newsmax channel, Newsmax TV network. And, and that's, a, that's part of the interview that you could see more of tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time, uh, right here on Newsmax television. And that was Donald Trump saying last week that he, guess what he did? He said, no, I'm not renewing. I don't want your renewal for The Apprentice. So it appears that he fired them before today. NBC made a big deal about saying, oh, we're, we're, we're firing Donald Trump because of what he said about Mexico and what he said about uh, immigrants and blah, blah, blah. Um, but Trump today said, no, no, I, I told him last week I can't do the show anymore. And apparently, not apparently, but there's the proof. He was right. Joining us on the panel, Larry Elder, radio host of The Larry Elder Show and author of Dear Father, Dear Son, Two Lives, Eight Hours and check out LarryElder.com, and check out DavidGoodFriend.com, because there you'll find Democratic strategist and former Deputy Staff Secretary to President Clinton, David Goodfriend. All right, gentlemen, uh, let's start with you, uh, uh, Larry. It looks like, um, you know, Trump, uh, Trump got the last laugh on them because he dumped them first. Okay, well, go to David in the meantime. Yeah, I'll Hi, take, hi can David. Can you hear me okay? Go ahead, David. All right, so I'll, I'll, I'll take this one. Listen, it, it reminds me of that line, you can't fire me, I quit. Uh, you know, I, I frankly think that the more interesting turn of events when it came to television and Donald Trump happened when Univision said they were not going to carry the beauty pageant because they disagreed so vehemently with what Donald said about Mexican-Americans and Mexicans. That was the big news. I, the, the NBC thing sounds like a he said, she said, who cares? He's not doing his show. I don't care why he doesn't do his show. Let's see him run for president. Let's see him stick up for his beliefs. And let's see what he does to the Republican field. That's interesting. But Univision did really drop coverage of the beauty pageant because of what he said about Latinos. Right. And uh, he, uh, well, he said about Mexican, uh, some Mex Mexican immigrants. Uh, and, I, I, and I don't know anything that he said about African Americans, as I think you stated also, but he just li limited no. to the Mexican immigrants. Well, but also, I, 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 they have a contract, uh, according to him, uh, Univision did to carry that. So uh, it, it might make for a very, very interesting uh, lawsuit. All right, let's, let, let's, um, let's, do we have Larry? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Larry, sorry about that. Or, uh, go ahead. Larry, you can weigh in on the... Uh, on the uh, oh, we didn't hear the question. Okay, the Donald no, I, Trump I, I, situation where, you know, today Univision, NBC made a big deal that they're firing Donald Trump. They're letting uh, him go. But last week he told our own J.D. Hayworth uh, that he told them, no, I'm not renewing The Apprentice, uh, even though they begged him to do it. He said, no, I can't. I'm running for president. Well, isn't it interesting that apparently uh, uh, NBC and Donald Trump are no longer in business, but uh, NBC is still in business with uh, with Al Sharpton, the anti-Semitic <laughs> race hustling tax uh, tax deadbeat. Uh, that's not a problem, but Donald Trump's got to go. That that was my initial reaction to all of this. That's a great but Donald point. Trump. Donald Larry, Trump is not afraid of suing. He'll sue. Great I got point, David. I I got to give Larry a real salute for that. That was that was very well put. Um, yes, Al Sharpton is controversial. Yes, Al Sharpton has said things that offend a lot of people. I think the difference here is Al Sharpton is not running. Well, I, well he has office. run for president. David, Larry, we'll come back. Part two, don't go away. Overall, what you want to do as a public official and as a leader is you want to kind of look for solutions where you can create more win-wins. And, and let's see how this thing develops. Everybody take a deep breath at this point. All right. That's John Kasich, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I think making a big mistake, and we'll have more on that in, uh, in the Gimme Five coming up at the top of the hour. Joining us once again on the Mulsberg panel, Larry Elder and David Goodfriend. Larry, uh, I don't understand. Uh, John Kasich's rationale is it's uh, the Supreme Court passed the gay marriage thing or signed off on it. Uh, let's take a deep breath. It's the law. 
Well, you know what? The, the Supreme Court signed off on Roe v. Wade. The Supreme Court just twice signed off on Obamacare. Is, is John Kasich, for the sake of unity, willing to give up on all of those things? For the sake of trying to, to win the presidential election, yes, because he's seen the polls. 60% of Americans support gay marriage. Republicans don't, especially those in the primary season. But I think Kasich is looking down the road, thinking that he'll be able to get through the primary season. When he gets to the primary season, the position to have is, well, the Supreme Court has spoken. Long term, we can get new justices. Long term, we can maybe turn this thing around. But for now, we're going to have to grin and bear it. That's his position. And, and, and uh, David, um, I, I just... Uh I don't see that satisfying the base, certainly, at all. Well, I have to tell you, as a Democrat, I fear uh, John Kasich. I think he would be a formidable candidate in the general election. Ohio is incredibly important. In fact, the Republicans cannot win the White House without Ohio by most electoral calculations. So what I see going on here is he's trying to say to the base, either you want to win the White House or you don't. If you do, I'm your guy and my centrist policy is the way to get there. If you don't, you can go with a Ted Cruz or uh, you know somebody else on the far right and we will lose. I think he's right and I think he's uh, he would be a formidable opponent. I would, I would much rather see Ted Cruz at the top of the Republican ticket than John Kasich as a Democrat myself. Well, I don't think you're going to see either one, but uh, that's another story. All right, so the State Department is withholding uh, 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 transcripts of the conversation between Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama in the aftermath of the Benghazi attack, which uh, many say now reinforces their notion that uh, Hillary Clinton was the one who came up with this videotape garbage as an excuse. Uh, and there's going to be more court cases to try to get this redaction undone and let us all see what kind of conversation they had. Uh, Larry, uh, this is just another outrage by this administration. Well, that's right. And the real issue is Hillary said she turned over all relevant documents. And it turns out there were documents going back and forth between her and Sidney Blumenthal that we never saw. And now this one's come up. One more time, it is a blow to her credibility. David? Why is Trey Gowdy so afraid of Hillary Clinton? Why does he just invite her to testify? She's offered to come in and answer any of his questions. They're afraid of her. Okay, they don't want they, oh, yeah, they're really afraid oh. of her. Yeah, she is going to come in and testify when what? the committee's what? ready. When? They what? haven't even said when she's coming. She said, I will come in today. I'll come in any day. Let's testify. Let's do this. Well, you know what, David? They have, to, they have to get more information. But uh, they can't, David, David, they keep finding out that there are more emails that exist that they didn't know about. They keep, so they talk to Blumenthal first. They're talking to other people first. So they'll have everything ready to ask her. Okay. Well, I look forward to that because so far, so far, the committee itself said that those emails you're talking about, the 15 emails that Blumenthal produced but Clinton didn't, were meaningless and had nothing of value and substance that actually date, predated anything relevant to Benghazi. So there goes that little made-up crisis. And on this one, well, I'd be very curious to see whether or not the State Department has a national security reason or a relevance reason or some other reason. The point is, let's have the main event already. It's enough already. Bring her in. Let her speak for herself. Well, they, 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 Larry, now we know that the Democrats are aching to get her in as early as possible and get this out of the way. Uh, so that the damage uh, that's done will be forgotten about, Larry. Well, you're saying that David, wait, 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 David, 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 let Larry go. David, if uh, Dick Cheney were required to turn over emails, and he said, well, you know what, I'll turn over the ones that I think are relevant, and then I'll destroy the rest of them and wipe down my server, you'd be marching on Washington. <laughs> it is outrageous <laughs> for Hillary to not turn over these documents, and then we find out from Blumenthal there are lots more that weren't turned over. You'd be outraged if the shoe were on the other foot and you know it. Look, all I'm saying, guys, is... I think, I think uh, Mr. Maltzberg here basically explained what the Republicans are up to. If you believe that it's somehow politically beneficial to Democrats to have Hillary testify now, you are essentially conceding that this is just a political circuit. No, I I'll tell you, David, let me tell you what I'm, my logic, you're the one who said, get her in there now, get her in there now. And I'm saying your anxiousness, if that's a word, to get her in there now shows that you're politically motivated to get it out of the way. I'm saying they're waiting till they get everything they could get so they'll see what they need to ask. Okay, well, personally, I think what the polls are showing us now as more and more Americans are being polled on this topic is that it's a loser okay. for Republicans. It's a loser. All right, well, then you shouldn't have any worries about it whatsoever. 
Larry, <laughs> Larry Elder, David Goodfriend, I thank both of you. Great to talk to you again on the Molesburg panel. We didn't get to Bob Costas, but I promise tomorrow we'll get to Bob Costas and his outrageous remarks to a player who pointed up to the heavens. Uh, we're coming up with Jed Babbin next. Don't go away.